In this video, we'll talk about benign liver tumors. This is not really a complex topic. There's not a whole lot you need to memorize here, but there are a few really high yield buzzwords that I want you to deposit in the back of your mind because when you're taking your exams, oftentimes when you see or hear about liver pathology, your brain is gonna reflex to the really, really high yield topics. Hepatocellular carcinoma, cirrhosis, all of the microbiology that we associate with different liver pathology, but it's really important to know about the benign liver tumors because these have such characteristic associations and buzzwords. So in other words, it's free points if you take five minutes to learn it. And I'm all about giving you the most amount of free points possible. So let's dive right into this. In this video, we'll talk about three different benign liver tumors. One is hepatic hemangioma, two is hepatocellular adenoma, and three is focal nodular hyperplasia. Let's start with hepatic hemangioma. So hepatic hemangioma, really not a whole lot to memorize. So we're starting off pretty easy. This is the most common benign liver tumor. And that's important for step two, level two and beyond. So kind of a theme here, step two, level two and beyond focuses a lot more on epidemiology. So if you have a patient on step two, level two or step three, level three, they describe something, they show you some imaging, and you're thinking this is probably some type of liver growth. If you think it's benign and you have no other information in the vignette to guide your answer, you should probably pick hepatic hemangioma based simply on the fact that it's the most common benign liver tumor. Again, epidemiology, very important to know once you're at that step two, level two phase. This has a very high female to male ratio. It tends to affect middle-aged adults roughly between the ages of 30 and 50. This is likely influenced by estrogen levels, but that's not important to know. Again, high yield fact here, most common benign liver tumor. Now, anytime we have a tumor in the liver, you're going to see some key clinical features, right upper quadrant pain, early satiety, and nausea and vomiting. This should make sense, right? There's a growth in the liver, so we have right upper quadrant pain. We have sort of a mass effect pushing on the surrounding, so you're going to get early satiety, and you're going to get nausea and vomiting. This is going to be the clinical features of all the benign liver tumors, not just specific to hepatic hemangioma. Here's an image of hepatic hemangioma. Really, the only thing to, to pay attention to here is that it's very well demarcated, and this can be useful when you're taking exams. If you see an image and you see a very well demarcated liver growth, then that kind of nudges you in the direction of hepatic hemangioma. But it's uniform and it's homogenous. As far as the histology goes, you'll see cavernous vascular spaces lined by flat endothelial cells. Admittedly, this image is not very high yield. What I want you to take away from hepatic hemangioma is that it's the most common benign liver tumor and it's very well demarcated on imaging. That's hepatic hemangioma. For hepatocellular adenoma, this has the highest female to male ratio of all of the benign liver tumors. So it tends to affect women of childbearing age. What's incredibly important to memorize here is that hepatocellular adenoma is highly associated with two substances, one oral contraceptives and two anabolic steroids. So on your exam, if you have a patient that's on either one of these things, and all of a sudden they have those clinical features suggestive of a possible growth in the liver, you need to have that light bulb go off in your head that associates oral contraceptives and anabolic steroids with hepatocellular adenoma. Now this has a risk of hemorrhage and rupture during pregnancy, and it also has a risk of malignant transformation to hepatocellular carcinoma. Clinical features are going to be the exact same that we've already talked about. So again, we have a growth in our liver that's gonna hurt. So we're gonna have right upper quadrant pain. We're gonna have that growth kind of expanding the surface area in the abdomen. So we're gonna get full sooner. We're also gonna feel a little, bit of a little bit of nausea and some vomiting. Now treatment, really, really important because hepatocellular adenoma is associated with oral contraceptive and anabolic steroid use, the best treatment is to simply discontinue the offending agent. So if you're taking oral contraceptives, stop using them. If you're taking anabolic steroids, stop using them. Now really, really handy mnemonic here, hepatocellular adenoma HA, helps me memorize what the association is. So for oral contraceptives, they HA, they help avoid pregnancy. Anabolic steroids, they help add huge gains. 
Okay, so HA, hepatocellular adenoma, HA for helping to avoid pregnancy in the case of oral contraceptives, and HA for helping to add gains in the case of anabolic steroids. Quickly for histology, you'll see enlarged hepatocytes with abnormal lobules. But that's hepatocellular adenoma. The big takeaway from hepatocellular adenoma is its association with oral contraceptives and anabolic steroids. Let's conclude by talking about focal nodular hyperplasia. So this has a high female to male ratio and it tends to affect females roughly in the age range of 30 to 40. And if it affects males, they tend to be more elderly. This is associated with hepatic, excuse me, hepatic arteriovenous malformation, so AVMs. So that's a very, very high yield association with focal nodular hyperplasia. Clinical features, exactly the same features that we've already seen. Again, to beat a dead horse here, we've got a tumor in the liver, that's gonna hurt the liver, we're gonna feel right upper quadrant pain. The amount of surface area in our abdomen is going to be expanding, so we're not gonna be as hungry, we're gonna get early satiety. And also, we're gonna feel nauseous and we're gonna vomit. So this should all make perfect sense. Now, focal nodular hyperplasia, two, two really high yield things to know. One is it's associated with AVMs that we already talked about. And the other is what you see on imaging. So here's an image that shows what's known as a central stellate scar. And it kind of looks like a, a star-like uh, graphic in the middle of the tumor. So if you see this, this is very, very different from the well demarcated homogeneous images that I've shown you thus far. So if you're taking your exam and you've got right upper quadrant pain and maybe some vague symptoms otherwise, and they show you this image, your brain needs to go off firing saying, oh, that's a central stellate scar. It looks like a, a star, if you will, in the growth. That has to be focal nodular hyperplasia. So of all of the benign liver tumors that we've talked about today, this is the only one with three words in the name. And because it is focal nodular hyperplasia, I always memorize FNH. And FNH is associated with the things that have three letters because FNH itself has three letters. So FNH is associated with CSS, which is central stellate scar, again, three letters and AVMs, arteriovenous malformations. So all you need to take away literally from focal nodular hyperplasia is FNH equals CSS and AVM. If you can memorize that, then these are free points for you on your test day.